there friends, it's Ashley here from The Loopy Lamb and TheLoopyLamb.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to make my olive branch afghan. To follow along with today's tutorial, you're going to need the following materials. I'm using a 10 millimeter or N slash P crochet hook. I say N slash P because depending on the brand you use, it could be either an N or P. So uh, if you're unsure, take a look for the millimeter size. It's a 10 millimeter crochet hook. And you'll also need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and if you're an absolute beginner, I do recommend having these two stitch markers handy, and I'll show you how we're going to use those later on in the video. For our yarn, we are using this Lion brand Respun Thick and Quick yarn. It is 100% recycled polyester. It's lovely yarn to work with, and it works up quickly because it's a super bulky size six yarn. So if you're uh, planning on doing any sort of yarn substitutions, you're going to need a size six super bulky weight yarn. You're going to need at least 1,493 yards of yarn to finish this afghan, which is about seven skeins of this brand of yarn. So again, if you're making any sort of substitutions, you're going to need 1,493 yards uh, to complete this blanket when you're crocheting to gauge. Now, before we clear off the workspace and get into the actual crocheting of the blanket, let's talk about gauge for a moment. Gauge is not vital to this project. However, it can affect the finished size of your afghan and the amount of yarn that you use. The gauge for this pattern is approximately eight stitches by five rows equals four inches. The approximate finish size of this blanket, again, when crocheted to gauge, is 48 inches wide by 60 inches long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear off my workspace and we'll get started working on our olive branch blanket. To start our blanket, we're going to need to create a slip knot. To do that, we're going to take the tail end of our yarn and we're going to hold it in our hand. And we're going to take the working end of the yarn, which is the yarn that is attached to the ball, and we're going to wrap it around our fingers like so. So we're gonna wrap around the back and bring it around to the front. Then we're gonna cross it over our fingers. Then you're gonna flip your fingers over and you're going to pin your yarn down with your ring finger. So just do that again. See my yarn, I'm laying it down and pinning it with my finger. Then I'm going to take my crochet hook and I'm going to go under the first strand and over the second, and then I'm going to pull the second strand out under my fingers, or under the first strand and off of my fingers like so. And I've transferred it onto the crochet hook. Now the part of the yarn that is coming from the ball, I'm gonna pull that tight and that's going to bring my slip knot up to my crochet hook. And now we are ready to start our crocheting. To create our blanket, we're going to need to create a chain of 98, all right? Now I have a very small workspace here and this is a sizable uh, blanket. So I'm gonna be making a smaller sized uh, example here to show you how to do this. Your, your piece will be much larger than mine. So again, we're starting with a chain of 98. To do a chain, we're going to yarn over hook and we're going to pull the yarn through the loop on our hook. That's your first chain. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through again. There's two. And we're going to continue to do this yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook until we have 98 chains. So if you'd like to pause your video and continue to do this chain until you have 98, I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're going to start with row one. So I've created my chain and I'm ready to start with row one. Now row one is the right side of our fabric and we're going to start row one by creating a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Now we never count the yarn on our hook as a chain. We're always gonna start in the chain directly next to our hook. So right here, and we're gonna count over four. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to place my finger there so I can keep track of that chain and I'm going to yarn over hook to start my double crochet. I'm going to insert my hook into that fourth chain. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops. You should have two loops left on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through those last two loops. And that's your first double crochet completed. Now, 
we have those skipped three chains here. That is going to be important to remember that later on, this counts as technically our first double crochet. Even though we've only actually completed or made one double crochet, this skipped three chains here will stand in for a completed double crochet, okay? And we're gonna get into that later. But if you are an absolute beginner, I do recommend grabbing a stitch marker at this point because we want to make sure that we don't lose this chain three later. So placing a stitch marker into the top of the chain three, right? So you can see there's one, two, and three chains. You're just gonna place your stitch marker into the top of that third chain. So that way, when you get to the end of your row, it reminds you that that's there, okay? So just, um, if you want to use that, you can, not necessary, but I do recommend this for first time crocheters. So moving on, we're going to place one double crochet into each remaining chain across. So we've already got one double crochet here, so we're gonna work into this very next chain right here. So we're going to yarn over our hook and insert our hook into the next chain yarn over and pull up another loop. Then we've got three loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops. You'll have two loops remaining on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. And that's your next double crochet completed. And we're going to be doing this all the way across. So again, yarn over, insert into the next uh, chain, yarn over and pull up a loop three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And that's your next double crochet completed. And so we're just going to work one double crochet into each chain across. And I'll show you one more time. If you'd like, you can pause your video now and work one double crochet into each chain across, but I'll show you one more time that double crochet yarning over into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. All right, so if you'd like to pause your video and work one double crochet into each chain across, at the end of this row, you should have 96 double crochets. And now when you're actually counting your stitches, you're going to actually get 95. So don't forget that, that those skipped three chains count as a stitch. So if you've got 95 double crochets, count those skipped three chains as a stitch and you've got 96. All right. So I'll meet you back here at the end of the row to show you how to move on to row two. All right, so I just finished my last double crochet of row one. You can see I've got all these double crochets. So your piece should look similar to this, just longer at this point. So for row two, we're going to start by creating a chain three turning chain. And to do that, we're going to yarn over our hook and pull through the loop on our hook. That's one. And we're gonna do this two more times. So we have three chains. So yarn over, pull through, there's two. Yarn over and pull through and that's three. And then we're going to turn our work like this. And this part of the fabric that is facing us, this is the wrong side of our fabric. So we're ready to move on to working our row two. But if you are, again, a complete beginner, I recommend having that stitch marker handy because this chain three that we just did is going to count as our first stitch. So we're going to put a marker in the top of that chain after completing our next set of stitches. So to start with row two, we're going to skip the first stitch because again, that chain three counts as our first stitch, which means we don't work into that first stitch. We're going to then skip the second stitch and we're going to double crochet into the third stitch. So taking a look at the top, you can see that we've got these V's here. So if you're looking at the top, you've got this V that's kind of attached to our chain three. We're skipping that one. We're skipping the second V and we're working under both legs or both loops of this third V here. So we're going to yarn over and insert our hook into that third stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Okay. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through two. And we've got a double crochet completed. But now we've got this big gap here. What are we, what's gonna happen there? So we wanna fill that in and we're going to do a double crochet into that skip stitch, but we're going to work behind the stitch we just uh, created. So in the uh, written version of this pattern, you'll see this um, 
represented this technique we're doing called an XDC or a crossed double crochet because we're going to cross our double crochets and it's going to create a really fun um, X pattern throughout this row and it's going to give these uh, double crochets a little bit of texture that uh, really creates a beautiful fabric. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to go in behind the stitch we just created and insert our hook into that skip stitch. Okay, so I'm going to do that again and from a bit of a different angle. So we're going to yarn over and I'm going to pull my work forward, making sure that I'm not losing that yarn over on my hook. I'm going to insert my hook into that skip stitch. So one more time, yarn over behind the stitch we just created and insert into the skip stitch. Then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And so you can see here we have this cross happening with our double crochets. And I'll show you how to do that again. We're going to do another cross double crochet. So a cross double crochet is these two steps. You're going to yarn over, skip the next stitch, and we're going to work into the next stitch. So skip one and into the next double crochet. Then we're going to yarn over and come from behind the stitch we just created and insert your hook into the stitch you just skipped. Yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. All right, we're going to com continue to do this cross double crochet all the way across our row. So again, skip one stitch, yarn over and double crochet into that next stitch. Then we're going to yarn over and working behind the stitch you just created, you're going to insert your hook into the skipped stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, at this point your fabric should look like this. On the We're on the uh, wrong side here. Then we're going to turn it over and it should look like this on the front side. And you can see that these uh, double crochets that we do in the skip stitch really kind of pop out on the fabric and it, it really is a beautiful texture. So we'll do another crossed double crochet skipping the next stitch. We're going to double crochet into the next stitch after that. Again working behind the stitch we just created we're going to double crochet into that skip stitch. And there's another crossed double crochet completed. So I'll show you this one more time. And um, if you're already comfortable, you can pause your video here and do your cross double crochet all the way across. And then meet me back here when you have one stitch remaining in the row. But I'll show you one more time how to do this cross double. So yarn over, skip a stitch and working into the stitch directly next or after the skip stitch, we're going to double crochet. Now working behind the stitch we just created, we're going to double crochet into the skipped stitch. And that's your crossed double crochet. So if you'd like to pause your video, do a crossed double crochet all the way across your piece and you should have one stitch left to be worked that you cannot cross double crochet into because you need two stitches to do a cross double. So meet me back here when you get to that stitch and I'll show you how we're going to finish off round two. So I'm at the end of row two. This is what my fabric looks like. This is again the wrong side. This is the right side and we have this last stitch here with our chain three in it, okay, or with our stitch marker in it, which is our chain three. So what we're going to do is we're going to double crochet into that uh, stitch. So I'm going to move my stitch marker out of the way and I'm going to double crochet into the top of that chain three. So just working, it's, uh, you can turn your chain over if it makes it easier for you to see. You can see the little V there and we're just going to work into the top of that chain and double crochet. Okay. Now, if you do find that your um, double crochet or your chain three here is kind of uh, looping out and you've got a big gap, it's not as straight as you'd like, what you can do, and this is what I often do if I'm finding this 
is a problem. You can just double crochet into the second chain. You don't have to do it right in the top. Um, for me, sometimes my chains get a little looser than the rest of my fabric. So if I go into that second chain, then it just holds that chain three a little straighter for me. Now, and I forgot when we started doing the cross doubles that after I did my chain three, I wanted to place that stitch marker in the top of this, the chain three. So I'm just gonna place that chain uh, stitch marker here in the top of the chain three until uh, so that way I know where this stitch is at the end. Again, if you want to place a stitch marker, that second stitch marker in your first stitch, you can do that as well as this. So that way you're not, uh, you're always making sure that you know where you begin and where you end. It's totally up to you. I had to do that for a long time and still do that sometimes depending on the yarn. So um, again, place a stitch marker in that chain three if you haven't already. So for row three, we're going to just chain up three again. So yarning over, pull through three times, and then we're turning our work. And for row three, we're going to work one double crochet into each stitch across. So we're going to skip that first stitch because in every row of this pattern, when it starts with a chain three, those chain three counts as your first stitch, which means you're skipping that stitch and you're working into the next. And we're just going to place one double crochet into each stitch across. So if you'd like to pause your video and meet me back here at the end of this row, I'll show you what we're doing to finish this row. So I'm about to finish my last stitch of row three and you can see I've got that stitch marker here in the top of my chain three. Every time you come to a chain three in this pattern, you have to work a double crochet into the top of it because it counts as a, as a stitch. So we're just gonna yarn over and insert our hook into that chain three and double crochet. So this is the right side of our fabric. You can see that we've got these this raised ridge created by working our uh, cross double crochets and working the post behind uh, the stitch that we create in contrast to these regular double crochet rows. And when you get this in a larger fabric, it really is beautiful. Now for rows four through 75, we're going to do, we're going to just repeat rows two and three. So row two is that cross double crochet row and row three is a double cro one double crochet into each stitch across. So you're just going to repeat rows two and three for rows four through 75. Now, if you're when you get to the end of your pattern, I'll show you now how we're, we would finish this blanket off. We would we're going to finish on a double crochet row. And I've if this is my last stitch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to leave at least uh, four to six inches here. Cut my yarn, and then I'm going to yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop on my hook and pull that tight and then you'll weave in your ends using your tapestry needle and then you would be completed your blanket. Now if you, again if you want this blanket in other sizes I have written this pattern in 13 different sizes and those are all available in the PDF versions of this pattern that's available in my Ravelry and Etsy shops. If you're looking for the written version of the afghan size of this blanket you can find that on my blog as a free version available uh, at theloopylam.com. So if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. You can leave those in the comment section below. And uh, if you enjoy free crochet patterns, please check out my blog, theloopylam.com. Thanks so much for watching, friends. Happy hooking, and I'll see you next time.